Could we uh, pray at this time, please? Heavenly Father, we invite your presence here. We feel it already. And Lord, today we ask that everything that is said, that it come from you. Lord, if there are any thoughts that I have, please block them if they're not of your saying and not what you want your people to hear today. We pray, pray that your Holy Spirit would come and control this service. We ask that you would come and minister to us. And we thank you so much for your presence. And Lord, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. And we thank you today that you will be with us here this morning in this service by your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I knew as soon as I said amen, I was going to look up and all of y'all were going to be looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were. Yes, you were. It's amazing sometimes. You know, I shared this before, uh, back in 1974, of taking a class in public speaking, and it said that we cannot teach you how to get rid of the butterflies, but we can teach you how to get them to fly in formation. <laughs> I always have one that will not listen. <laughs> it goes, and Sharif and I were talking before, and he said, did you get nervous? And I said, yes, I do. I get nervous every time. Uh, and I think that the time comes when I don't get nervous, I guess I'll be saying, I don't think I'm fully prepared. You know, Lord, let me... Uh, cover everything that you want to cover today. Uh, we were talking about how long the service would be, and I was trying to figure out how Marty knew what time it was. I didn't realize that clock was right over there. <laughs> and I thought he had this immense wisdom, you know. Uh, Ted came a wonderful idea. He, he said, that I, I can tell you how to gauge your sermon. I said, I said, he said, put a lozenge in your mouth, and when it's gone, you are. <laughs> I don't have a lodging, I have a bottle of water, I don't think I'll drink all of it, but uh, you know, if uh, if you feel like we're going too long, Suku I know can just go like this. I, 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 I've seen her do it today, and I know it works. I know it works. Oh, praise the Lord. It's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be in his house. and to uh, share with you what was on my heart even before Marty said we need someone to speak. And that simply was in the, in the, in the or bulletin, simply the presence. Presence. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And the praise team did a wonderful job of bringing together that word presence. That word presence. Um, you have it. Everyone has it. But very, very few people take advantage of the full power of presence. For starters, it's one of those intangibles that's easier to recognize than it is to describe. When we see some people enter a room it seems as if they create a magnetic atmosphere. The power of presence. Without even appearing to try, they capture everyone's attention by simply just being there. I took to the Cambridge Dictionary to sort of give us a little idea of the meaning of the word presence. And it said the fact that someone or something is in a place. A feeling that someone is still in a place, although they are not there or are dead. Think about that one for a minute. How many of you felt the presence of someone who's passed away through a memory in your mind? It's also defined as a group of police or soldiers who are watching and controlling a situation. 
It's also defined as a quality that makes people notice or admire you even when you are not speaking. <clears throat> in today's scripture we're looking at, and that's in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version because of one of the particular <coughs> things that I want to emphasize there. So, 1 Kings 19 chapter, verses 11 and verse 12. Then he said to Elijah, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. That's what we want to concentrate on today, is the still, small voice. The point of God speaking in a still, small voice was to show Elijah that the work of God certainly does not need all, is not always and does not need to be accomplished by dramatic revelation or manifestations. We need to learn how to recognize God's still, small whisper as it's in the NIV. <clears throat> And when it speaks to our hearts because these manifestations of His presence are just as breathtaking as the earthly eruptions caused by God's glory. The speaking of that whisper or the speaking of that still, small voice. Our day-to-day -day lives are mostly spent doing ordinary routine activities. A lot of us are on autopilot on tomorrow morning at about 8.30 or 9 o'clock or 6.30 or 5.30. When your alarm goes off, your body's going to go on automatic pilot. You know? You know that you have to get up. I know that I have to get up and go fix my coffee. First thing I do is fix my, fix my coffee. The next thing I know I have to do is I have to go over to where Lynn is doing her studies and refill her cup because she's been up longer than I have. So I refill her cup and go back. Then I go and do a little my devotions. After that, it's, it's routine. After that, I come back out, I put the vitamins in. I don't even have to think anymore. But one day I got confused, and when it's time to take the vitamins, I picked up all of hers. And I looked in my hand, and I said, I have too many pills here. Something's wrong. And I had as they say, commingled, and had commingled them there, but they had to separate them back. So we do the mundane tasks, sleeping, eating, commuting. How many of you think about driving to work? Do you actually think about driving to work? You don't think about it, do you? You don't, you're, you know, it's like my car's on autopilot. You know, we went to Greenville, and Lynn said, uh, you think we're going to be all right driving back late? I said, sure, no problem. We put it on 264, and I'll put it on cruise control. Take a nap when we get to Raleigh and we'll be there. <laughs> Was not too excited. So we do these things automatically. Automatically. Uh, taking care of our kids. We do that automatically. We don't even think about it. We, we do it. Um, the few hours, if, if any, that remain are normally described uh, and dedicated to family, friends, entertainment, and spiritual pursuits. It is in this last category that our Christian culture, cu culture has counseled us to develop our faith and to pursue God's kingdom, His Word, and His presence in our lives. There are members of our congregation 
who have extreme presence. And whether you realize it or not, you know who you are because God blesses you and pours out His Spirit on you. Your presence gather, gathers folks together and gets their attention. Your presence. Your presence here is vital to the worship of this congregation. Your presence here puts the puzzle together. And when you're not here, a piece of the puzzle is missing. In the, am I not right? We, we miss them. We miss their presence, you know. Um, our mere presence brings comfort to the sick. It brings calm in the midst of a family storm. Our presence provides grace in our workplace. And just being there in any situation, our presence causes things <clears throat> and causes people to be calm and to be okay and to give that calming atmosphere. At work, people are influenced by us. Who in your workplace has shown their presence to you in a special way? Who do you work with that comes into your work and their presence simply makes your day? Their presence simply th gives you the opportunity to be thankful for where you are. I want to share with you a, a, a personal friend of mine who's passed away now. But this man had one of the greatest gifts of the power of presence that I've ever seen. His name was Crafton Hudson. I had the opportunity of working with him for a number of years. Him training me to do what I do today. I've seen this man walk into circumstances that were complete, total chaos and disaster. Families suffering tremendous losses. I could recount to you some of the things that we shared, that, that we worked with, that would literally break your heart. But I've watched people during that time when he walked in, you could feel the calm begin to move across the room. Because they knew everything was going to be all right because Crafton was there. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. And you could feel that as it moved across the room. Everyone knew then that things were going to be okay. I shared a story, I've shared this story many times about presence in my life. Don't have a logic, I've got water, so I'll, I'll start working on my water bottle. I was going to use my coffee, but I took a sip while ago and that was a little too hot. Um, I have a bubble cup, it's kin to a uh, what's the great one that's supposed to be so good? Yeti. Yeti. It's a Yeti ripoff. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> Bubba does as good a job as Yeti does. That's right. I've shared this story many times with you folks, and please bear with me as my hair gets gray and my senior moments come to me. But um, I was going to have to have surgery. And the surgery was all planned out and everything, and, uh, you know, they always get you to sign those documentations that say in the highly unlikely, you know, this could happen or this could happen. And you initial and say, uh, we're not going to hold them responsible. You know, don't hold them responsible for that. Lynn and Marty and I were sitting in the waiting room at the hospital waiting for to have my surgery on that day. And we were sitting there and I had more than one butterfly going in different directions. And out came this gentleman and he said, I'm looking for William Joyner. And I said, that's me. He said, I've come to take you back to get you prepared for surgery. My name is Moses. <laughs> I thought to myself, I can follow Moses. That, that's not a problem. Uh, 
after all, going back to the back, and of course they get you prepped, and then they put all the IVs in, and they get you to uh, initial some more forms that you're not going to hold them liable or anything, and I'm laying there, you know, all IV'd up and everything. This other fellow comes in, and he said, uh, and of course he gets his little sheet out, and they verify who you are and why you're there. And he's, uh, then the guy comes in and he says, I'm going to take you in for your surgery now. My name is Jacob. <laughs> I thought to myself, I think everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Moses brought me in here. Jacob's going to take me for my surgery. So everything, everything will be fine. God wants you to know and have the power of his presence. That he is looking after you. He's with you every single day, no matter where you are. He helps you in making your decisions. He helps you in your daily walk. He helps you at work. He helps you at home. Let's take a look at some of the things that how we need, how we need to keep the presence of God in our life. Come clean with it. Sometimes we can't sense God's presence because there's something blocking the communication between the two of us. He hasn't left, but our sensitivity to his presence might be affected by some of the things in our life that we need to take a look at. The psalmist David said in the Psalm 32, verses 3 through 5, 3 through 5 he said, When I kept silent, and David was talking about his sin. My bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Keeping our communication with God completely open, you know. Being honest and saying, Lord, that was an attitude. I had to do that Friday. There were some things that I was thinking on Friday that uh, Lord knows. Um, they Some of the words I wanted to say were not found in the Cambridge Dictionary. <laughs> uh, so it was basically one of those days, you know. Y'all, have y'all ever had those? You know, following Murphy's Law. But we need to come clean with God and make sure that our communication is open so we can communicate, so God can speak to us because that's the only way that we are uh, able to accomplish the purpose that God wants us to accomplish. And there's nothing wrong about asking God's forgiveness. There's nothing wrong of, with, with saying, Lord, I, I need you to forgive me for this. I need you to forgive me for this thought. I need you to wash me in your blood and, and help me to realize that I did something wrong and you've, you've already forgiven me for it. Help me. Keep the communication of lines uh, open. And also, if we feel God isn't around with us, sometimes we haven't talked to him in a while. Or because we have avoided the thought of him for so long. We confess to God what's on our hearts and mind and go ask him to give a us an ear to hear his voice again. We know that in 1 John, and we studied this in our, our, our meeting, tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When our fellowship with him is restored, the communication can flow again. Most all of you have cell phones. You go to instances when you're going somewhere where you don't have a connection and what you do you try to find that place that you can get that connection where you can call we should always keep our communications open to god let us be able to talk to him on a daily basis be able to worship him on a daily basis and it can be done in all the things that we do every day in our task. If it can be done on the way to work, 
you know, it's done. It can be done. In, I'm sure there are times that you pray when you fly on an airplane, right? But yeah. I've prayed many a time on the interstate, you know. Uh, Lord, get us, Lord, Lord, you know, just help. To go by an accident, help. Lord, be with those people who are there. Pray continuously. Let God help you with other people by simply your presence, either there or in prayer. <laughs> Read scripture aloud. The opportunity late yesterday after yesterday to sit on our, our porch and simply read scriptures and read aloud and to study and listen to the birds sing, watch the squirrels, you know, as they scamper through stealing the bird seed. Uh, read it aloud. It does something to your heart when you read that scripture. It does something. It puts it on the inside. I know every morning we have uh, in prayer for, for Andrew, Andrew Brunson. And, and Lord, put that scripture in his heart so that it will be there for him. When we audibly speak God's word, we can sense its power and its presence. God's word, the Bible tells us, it's living, it's active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4.12 that sharp sword will either make us aware of its weight or prick our hearts through conviction, inspiration, or determination. That word, God's word, that we read and speak aloud to ourselves. We have a wonderful praise team. When we come here, we sing God a love song. It's a love song. When we began to praise and worship Him in song, God inhabits in the praises of His people. Ever wondered why we sometimes feel closer to God when we're in a church service? It's because we're singing hymns and praises. Even there are times when you are moved to emotion by the words of a song or a hymn and you cannot sing. Other people pick up those words. And other people sing those words. And you're able to hear them. You know, I remember one time many, many, many years ago had the opportunity to go to Bob Jones University. They have a choir. They had a choir there that day. That was just phenomenal. And they sang, it is well with my soul. And you could feel God's presence come through. There would be the song, there would be the words, it is well. And then it would echo up to where other people in the choir was. And they would be saying, it is well. It is well with my soul. And I'm sure as we come into this worship service, and as we are led by God's people who brought into this place, God enjoys listening to our prayers, our hymns, our songs, our worship, as we give him the glory and give him the honor from this congregation. Because whether two or three are gathered, he's, he's there. And just like the song today, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. Have you ever thought you heard the brush of angels' wings? Looked around and seen the glory <coughs> on each face? Then you can say to yourself, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. There have been people who have come here and said they felt it when they came. The presence of the Lord has drew people as they drove down Green Road. That presence drew them here. <coughs> Once they came in, they felt that presence. They felt the presence of the Lord. And you are part of that. You are an integral part of the presence 
of God in this building because you are those who bring about the worship that you hear. When we start praying and praising Him, regardless of where we are, we sense His presence. We're not focused on ourselves, but on Him. When we open the door to our hearts to love Him, He will meet us there. Say His name. People around you may be using God's name right and left. Some of it is a swear word. <coughs> Anger, thoughtless expression. But Scripture tells us that there is power in the name of Jesus. Because salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we may be saved. It's found in Acts 4.12. Say his name aloud as the answer to all you see. <clears throat> as the source to calm your soul, as the one whose presence you long for, and you will sense his presence, and you will sense his peace. There's no other name. There's not another name that can do that. Jesus. Jesus. That name invokes his presence and peace. You've heard me speak of this in talking about breath prayers. Breath prayers. There are times when we need him, but we just don't know what to say or where to start. We want him there, but we don't know how to ask. We need him there, but we don't know how to ask. Start by simply saying his name and then speak your heart's cry. For me, oftentimes, it's simply, Jesus, I need your presence. Taking a deep breath and saying, be with me, calm me, give me your peace. Breathe deeply. Sometimes we can't sense God's presence because too much of everything else is going on. Too much noise sometimes, too much traffic, too much confusion, too many thoughts running all the way through our minds, too much anxiety. Center your mind on Him and start to breathe deeply. Let's try that. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Exhale distracting thoughts. Inhale a desire to sense his presence. Exhale your preoccupation and concentrate on Him. Inhale a desire to know Him more completely. Exhale the worries of the moment. Inhale His peace. Exhale, thanking him for his peace. Inhale and sense that you are in his arms. Exhale and know you are secure in him. There's a reason God's word says, be still and know that I am God. Heavenly Father, this morning, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for your peace. 
we thank you so much that you have allowed the brush of angels' wings in this service. That you have come and communed with us and we have so much enjoyed your fellowship. We thank you for the honor of singing your praises. We thank you for the honor of worshiping you. We thank you that every person that's here today, you sense their presence. We're not here by chance. We're here because this is where we're supposed to be. We're worshiping you, Lord, the way that you want to be worshiped. And we thank you for that. And we thank you now that you have given us our peace that we can enjoy only in you simply by speaking your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, continue, continue your presence with us. And we ask all these things in the wonderful and mighty and magnificent name of Jesus. Amen.